Well, Runway have dropped a pretty big bombshell in the world of AI video. This marks an impressive jump in terms of what we can do with our footage, be it AI generated or you know, traditionally captured. So today we're gonna dive in to see how it works if it really is the death of the VFX industry. Spoilers, it's not. But that also does not mean it isn't good. Let's go dive in. So in my last video, we talked about Runway's Olive, which is a new feature that allows you to modify pretty much any aspect of a video source. Access is starting to roll out now, and well, as promised, I got access, so we're, we're gonna check it out. Now, as a note, I have not had as much time as I normally like to play with it, uh, in that like I didn't make an entire short film like I did when Act 2 dropped. But that's not to say that I did not put it through its paces. Kicking off, uh, yeah, Runway, I guess this new feature essentially is already kind of baked in. So there is no like turning it on. The overall idea that Runway seems to be pushing towards is kind of more of an agentic workflow in that you, you're going to be chatting with Runway as opposed to you know, providing it with directions. We'll talk a little bit more about the agentic thing in a bit, but uh, for now, actually, we're gonna roll back the clock a little bit to the botched wedding of our woman in the red dress and our man in the green tuxedo. So this initially began as a mid-journey video. Uh, more or less, I was pretty happy with the generation, minus the fact that our, our guy's tux was not really green. It was definitely leaning more towards black. Uh, so running that through Runway's new model with the text prompt of change the man's tuxedo to green, and we did indeed get it. Now, I do want to note that it is mostly in the bow tie and uh, on the collaring of the tux. Like, the jacket isn't, like, super lime green, but I also didn't prompt for that. For our next test, I want to see how the model would handle uh, traditional media. So I grabbed this piece of stock footage, uh, you know, very uh, femme fatale, noir-esque, you know, right up my alley. The runway model, on the other hand, well, it doesn't really necessarily have opinions on colorization, but it does a pretty good job of it. I do want to note that it is only capable currently, at least, of outputting five seconds at a time. So that is something that you should either plan accordingly for or use to an effect, uh, as a friend of the channel, Blaine Brown, does here with the you know now infamous, famous, infamous uh, little Yachty opener. Oddly, that five second limitation makes it a perfect marriage with mid-journey generated videos. Uh, all right, back to our colorized noir woman standing at the top of the stairs. Uh, I actually ended up giving a wide angle to that now colorized shot. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it sort of in paints out the rest of the location. Looks pretty good. And finally rounding out, I ended up getting a close-up on our noir woman's face. Now, I do have to say, is this the same woman as uh, the original source material? It, it really is not, but we've also put this through like three different video processes. Speaking of faces, I'd say, you know, it's around 50-50 in terms of character attributes changing. For example, you know, taking the very famous opening of A Clockwork Orange uh, with the character of, you know, the zoom in into Alex's face as he deadpans. Uh, I issued the prompt to have this man smiling and laughing. And we ended up with this, which is indeed still the shot. It's just that, you know, it's no longer Malcolm McDowell. Uh, it's, it's that dude, Brad, that uh, every time he tells a joke, he says, you know what I mean? And then punches you in the shoulder. No one likes that, Brad. You know what I mean? And that kind of circles us back to that agentic style of prompting. That is something that I have uh, been catching myself a little bit on lately is the fact that it does kind of encourage you to be a little bit lazy in your prompts. So like any good manager should, make sure that you are giving very you know, explicit directions uh, when you're issuing commands, uh, like make sure to maintain him as the same character. Our output here, I mean, still not 100%, but it does hold on uh, the original character for a little bit longer. Speaking of directions, Olaf is multimodal, so you know you can use visual instruction as well. Uh, for example, taking this clip from Casino Royale and these sunglasses that I generated up in Mid Journey, uh, we can combine them with a simple prompt like put these sunglasses on this man. And yeah, it actually totally works. It is not perfect. It is hilarious. Also, don't make fun of Bond in those sunglasses. They were made by Q. They can kill you. Pretty interesting test here from friend of the channel, Alex, uh, Maxis Hugh. Uh, at the top is a test that he ran in Runway's Act 2 uh, with him, you know, essentially playing the part of the Joker. And then below that was the prompt, show me the reverse angle of this shot. And uh, essentially we ended up with a film crew there. How much would it, it suck to be like the documentary crew following the Joker around? I mean, every day the sound guy that has to mic him up with a lavalier is probably thinking, well, today's the day. But that did get me thinking about our mid-journey generated green screen barbarian queens. Namely, can we do a full VFX pass uh, on this uh, shoot that doesn't actually exist? And sure enough, yeah, it, it actually worked. Uh, that's kind of insane. 
and it does seem to continue to work pretty well. Uh, here she is, guest starring on The Office. Speaking of which, I did see that someone took the opening credits to The Office and actually removed all the characters using Runway's Olive. Um, yeah, this this is pretty amazing, pretty hilarious. Uh, totally reminds me of like Garfield without Garfield. Yeah, uh, this is pretty impressive. I did say in our last video that I thought removal was going to be a bit of a powerhouse in this model. Uh, so taking this shot from, actually from our last video on VO3 visual prompting, uh, I just issued the prompt for uh, the knight to be removed. And I mean, that's that, he's gone. That is actually really impressive. And that leads us down the rabbit hole of, can you remove uh, those visual prompts essentially from VO3 outputs. As many of us know, when you're using this VO3 prompting style, you know, it takes a little bit for those visual descriptors to vanish. Well, can we use Runway uh, to get them, you know, off the screen quicker? And we are going to take a look at that in one second. But the other problem that VO3 has is, well, subtitles. So can we use this to get rid of the subtitles? Well, uh, let's take a look at this scene that was generated in VO3. The border is right past those trees. I can 100% tell you that platoon is not making it to the border. One quick prompt later, and indeed our subtitles are now gone. Now in terms of our longer and more you know, descriptive visual prompts, such as this shot. These last few days with you have felt like I'm- Living in a simulation, I feel the same. If we're prompts, I don't care, I wanna marry you. You can indeed get it to work, but Runway does kind of have this habit of wanting to change the overall style of your output. Going back to being a good manager, uh, if you try something like just remove the text at the start of this clip, uh, you end up with just essentially an entirely different shot. Uh, again, it's my fault. I wasn't giving it enough information. So it did take me a number of, I don't want to call them re-rolls, I would say regenerations, uh, in order to finally get something that was consistent with our initial video. Uh, and for that, I had to use uh, a prompt that was like, you know, uh, keep everything else the same, maintain the color grading, and then reiterated, uh, keep all the details the same, uh, minus the text and boxes. Now, I should say one place it did work really well is with uh, denim belt karate master, Sydney Sweeney. I mean, I definitely have to say this one is a bit of a gimme. Uh, the, that text is obviously very contrasty against the black background. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, Runway had no problem zapping these. Sliding over to some community outputs, uh, Jared Liu is playing around with, you know, object removal, object swap, background removal, uh, you know, essentially all of the in painting and out painting things here. Um, yeah, all of this looks really great. Andy McNamara utilizes it as a rendering engine here. This looks really impressive and cool. It does get me thinking about, you know, the future of this feature as we begin to bash things like, uh, you know, frames, references, uh, act two into it. Um, yeah. Uh, you can see that this is going to be very powerful. Our pal Dave Clark generated this up while like literally at the beach when the feature dropped it. Like Dave just does not know how to relax. This is like the fourth clip I've seen of Dave uh, generating things while either on vacation or at the beach. Speaking of actual footage, uh, Z Tang, hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, gives us this kind of apartment view shot. Um, this is so cool. Uh, this is the stuff that I think, uh, I really do think that iPhone and uh, DSLR footage, like this is where uh, this feature is really going to fly. This clip from our pal Selfie the Time Traveler, the famous, you know, I know Kung Fu fight sequence from the Matrix. Um, yeah, this is really pretty impressive. Kind of went ham here, uh, considering that he's, I don't want to say he got over the five second limitation, but this is a creative way of kind of getting around the five second limitation. Um, yeah, very cool work, Selfie. So I got to say, overall, this is a very exciting time for AI video. Like in the last, well, in the last two videos that I've done, we've gotten like two completely new workflows. And I will totally say that visual prompting in VO3 and Runways Olive, look, they, I mean, they're not perfect. In fact, here's a hilarious outtake from trying to change that tuxedo green. Will there eventually be a point where you simply type on a keyboard, make movie? I mean, I guess, but like the real fun is the tug of war with these models. Runaways Olive should be released wide fairly soon. As I always say, keep an eye on Friday. They love their Friday drops. So I know there's still a ton of stuff that I need to get to. Uh, WAN 2.2 dropped. I have not gotten a chance to mess around with that yet. Ideogram actually has uh, released a character creator. It's probably one of the better uh, like one-shot image to consistent character models that I've seen yet. 
and our friends over at showrunner uh the guys that were kind of doing the netflix of ai thing uh yeah they just picked up an amazon investment i did want to dig a little bit into that because that platform is actually it's kind of cool i know with showrunner you can kind of get caught up in the south parkness of the front end uh but it's actually what's happening underneath where it's sort of like it's like legitimately a world model for each of these shows with like characters running around that's the part that's always super fascinating to me so i'll definitely have to take a look at that a little later on in the meantime i said in our last video that i thought this was going to be a very busy week and indeed it has been a very busy week so i'm sure i will see you again very soon in the meantime i thank you for watching my name is tim